Happy April Mundo Monday, fans! There are many things that make April special, but at the library, most of all, April is Poetry Month. And just like people of every culture around the world have stories to tell, people of every culture around the world have also created poetry. Poetry is a little different from stories. Instead of simply telling a story in a straightforward, talking to somebody sort of way, poetry is playing with words, picking just the right words to express a feeling or sound a certain way. Sometimes that means the words rhyme, but sometimes it's more about the rhythm. Some poems tell epic stories, like the ancient Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh, which is over 4,000 years old and, you might remember from last summer, has a dragon in it. But other poems are very short, capturing a single brief feeling or idea in just a few perfect words. One of the best known forms of very short poetry comes from Japan, and it is called haiku. The introduction to this book explains what haiku is. Here. Haiku tries to capture a single moment, like a snapshot of time or a feeling, in a way that reveals the beauty of that moment and what it tells us about life. Haiku poems traditionally use images from the natural world and are set in a particular season. The season may be named directly or hinted at through an image from nature. A cherry blossom, for instance, would show that the poem is set in spring. Traditional haiku also has a very structured form. Three lines of five, seven, and five syllables. When translated into other languages, the syllable structure is sometimes lost, but the essential spirit of the poems remains. So if you want to read traditional Japanese haiku, but you don't know Japanese, you may find some that has been translated to English, but it doesn't always have that 575 pattern. But that's okay because it still feels like haiku. This book is traditional Japanese haiku translated to English. The American illustrator G. Brian Karas selected a whole year of haiku and drew pictures for it that was written by the Japanese poet Isa, Isa. over 200 years ago. Isa is his pen name. He was born Kobayashi Yataro, but he published his poetry under the name Isa, which means a cup of tea. You will see haiku is like that. A little cup of tea for your soul. Let's read the spring poems from this book, Today and Today. Haiku by Isa, pictures by G. Brian Karas. Once snows have melted, the village soon overflows with friendly children. I see the 575 pattern in that one. See it? Once snows have melted, the village soon overflows with friendly children. Just being alive, miraculous to be in cherry blossom shadows. Today and today, there's the title of the book. I'm going to read it again. Today and today, also a kite entangled in a gnarled tree. In hazy spring mist, sitting inside the great hall, not a hint of sound. Uh, maybe she has to finish her homework before she goes out and plays. The spring day lingers in the pools. That poem has the opposite of 575. Actually, it only has eight syllables altogether. It's three, two, three. Like you said in the introduction, translation sometimes changes things. But it still feels haiku-like, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The spring day lingers 
in the pools. You can feel the springiness of the puddles. You can smell it. That's what haiku does. In fact, according to the author of my next book, haiku is not actually about syllable counting at all. He's not. It's about beats, where you feel emphasis. Uh, let's take a look at one last spring poem in this book before I put it down. There's, there's actually one at the end of winter. You see, it has five, seven, five syllables again. As simple as that, spring has finally arrived with a pale blue sky. But it has two beats in the first line, three beats in the second, and two beats in the third. So like this, as simple as that, Spring has finally arrived with a pale blue sky. Oh, I see. Tell me more. Well, this next book has poems written in a different form of Asian poetry. Sijo from Korea. Korea is right across the water from Japan. But these particular Sijo were not written in Korean and translated to English. They were written in English by a Korean-American writer, Linda Sue Park. And this is what she says about Sijo. Sijo is a traditional Korean form of poetry. Like a Japanese haiku, a Sijo is written using a syllabic structure. In its most common form, a Sijo in English has three lines, each with 14 to 16 syllables. Each line of, of Sijo in Korean has two halves with three stresses or beats in one half and four in the other. Because the lines can be quite long on a page, Sijo and English are sometimes divided into six shorter lines. The Sijo in this collection are presented in both three lines and six line formats. Each line in a Sijo has a special purpose. The first line introduces the topic. The second line develops the topic further. And the third line always contains some kind of twist, like humor or irony, an unexpected image, a pun, or a play on words, or a joke. Now, it doesn't have to be a very jokey joke, but just like this. Breakfast. For this meal, people like what they like the same every morning. Toast and coffee, bagel and juice, cornflakes and milk in a white bowl, or warm, soft and delicious, a few extra minutes in bed. Do you see how the last line, maybe it's not so much a joke, but it twists around what you're, what you're thinking about. Because for breakfast, people like all these different foods, but sometimes for breakfast, some people just like to sleep in. So instead of a food, it's, it's something else they're doing instead. Let's read a few more from this book. Keisha says my fish doesn't look like anything she's ever seen. Flowered fins, plaid scales, and the tail tie-dyed weirdo green. But in this ocean, I'm queen. That tail, my dear, is aquamarine. Pockets. What's in your pockets right now? I hope they're not empty. Empty pockets, unread books, lunches left on the bus, all a waste. In mine, one horse chestnut, one gum wrapper, one dime, one hamster. You see the twist? You keeping a hamster in your pocket? Oh, here's a good one, because it's a spring one. Daffodils blare out the news. Birds chatter, squirrels jabber. All ecstatic, spring is here. Except for the apple tree, who wakes late, stretches, shakes herself, makes one last drift of pale pink snow. Or flower petals. Brushing. Whenever I forget, my dad makes me get out of my warm bed. The bathroom light is too bright. I squint, squeeze out too much toothpaste. I wish I could skip it just one. Excuse me. Okay, I can't speak just now. Wonderful. Do you have any poetry from other parts of the world in the library? 
Well, I did some searching, but I couldn't find any more that was a particular style associated with a particular place like haiku with Japan or Sijo with Korea. But I did find this book called A Child's Treasury of Irish Rhymes, which has many different styles of poetry in it. Here's Ireland, this island across from England. In Ireland today, most people do speak English, but many people also try to speak Irish as much as they can, so the language isn't lost. Are those poems in Irish or English? These are in English, non-translated. And here's one that rhymes. This is the first poem we've read today that rhymes. And it captures some Irish spirit through what it's about. Fairies and other magical beings. Ooh, you do not want to offend the fair folk Listen when you're up. in Ireland. The Whisper Whisper Man. The Whisper Whisper Man makes all the wind in the world. He has a gown as brown as brown. His hair is long and curled. In the stormy winter time, he taps at your window pane, and all the night, until it's light, he whispers through the rain. If you peeped through a fairy ring, you'd see him, little and brown. You'd hear the beat of his clackety feet scampering through the town. And then I found this other book called Rhymes Round the World. A lot of the rhymes in here are actually common English rhymes that you probably know already, but I did find this great one from Mozambique. Mozambique is over here in Southeast Africa? But this poem is about the whole world. It's a very Mundo Monday poem. Listen. The Wheel Around the World. If all the world's children wanted to play holding hands, they could happily make a wheel around the sea. If all the world's children wanted to play holding hands, they could be sailors and build a bridge across the seas. What a beautiful chorus we would make singing around the earth if all the earth's children would dance holding hands. Yes, all of us together around the earth, very mundo. I have one more that I want to share. It's not from another country. It's from an American poet, Naomi Shihab Nye. Although her father was from Palestine, and she often writes about her family there. Here's Palestine. But this one also reminds me of what we do at Mundo Mondays. It's called Torn Map. Once, by mistake, she tore a map in half. She taped it back, but crookedly. Now all the roads end in water. There are mountains right next to our hometown. Wouldn't that be nice if it were true? I'd tear a map and be right next to you. Ha -ha. If only it were as easy as tearing up a map to visit someone far away. Well, sometimes it can be as easy as picking up a book. Yes, and we will keep sharing books about all the people of the earth right here on Mundo Mondays.